It's time for the interview. It's time for breakthrough. If you're ready for next level blessings, abundance, and prosperity, then it's time to tune in to the interview with your girl, Trish M. Hey, fabulous ladies. Hey, it's your girl, Trish M. And did you know that I own a booty? Yes, ladies, yes. Check out Trish M. Boutique today and use code PODCAST to get 25% off the total order. Go to www.trishmfashions.com. That's Trish M. Fashions with an S. Dot com and don't forget use code podcast to get 25% off I'm anointed for this I'm anointed for this moment I'm anointed for this time I'm anointed for this hour I'm anointed for this See, in a pandemic, sometimes we forget what we're anointed for. We forget what we are uh, uh, called for because we get so caught up in the world and, and people dying left and right and all these issues. And now people are got frustration after frustration. Divorce rates are at an all-time high. Uh, uh, lack of people in the ministry, in church, listening to the word, praying and fasting. There's such a lack now. Because of the atmosphere of the world. And, and, and because of the atmosphere of the world, sometimes we forget what we're anointed to do. Sometimes we forget who we are anointed to be in the kingdom. God is saying, even though the world is going through, you got to show them what kingdom looks like. You got to show them what it looks like not to compromise because everybody is in a season, not everybody, but a lot of the world is in a season and a time of compromise like never before. We're in a season and time of sin like never before. We're in a season and time where Jesus could come at the drop of a dime because of what we see in the world. But I'm here to tell you that God is doing something in this hour. And he told me to tell, remind the people of God that you're anointed to pray. You know why you're anointed to pray? If you're a child of God, if you have accepted Christ in your life, you are anointed because you have a relationship. Come on, somebody. Because you have a relationship with God, then you have communion with God. Prayer is just simple communion with God. Somebody needs to open up their mouth in this hour and declare, I got communion with God and I got to start opening up my mouth let me tell you a closed mouth don't get fed come on somebody you better open up your mouth in this season so that your house can be fed your bank account can be fed your health can be fed your mindset can be fed come on you got to open up your mouth and declare unto the Lord what it is that you need in this hour what it is you got to open up your mouth God can say I can't hear some of us have gotten malnourished in the spirit and he can't hear your voice he can't hear your voice and you can't hear his because he can't hear yours come on we're distracted and we can't get tap into the realm of God there's a realm of power in the things of God but we can't tap into the realm because of this thing and that thing and now we unfocus and now we discombobulated and now we ask ourselves where is the power that comes with my prayer where is the power that comes with my prayer? God is saying you can't get caught up because he needs you to show up and let the world know that God is still moving. God is still blessing. God ain't stopped just because the world went into a crisis. I'm telling you, God knew it was coming before it came. And so I, we've been talking about being anointed to pray. We've been talking about being anointed to pray. Uh, to pray. Then we got praise. And I'm 
telling you that you're anointed tonight to walk in power. Come on, somebody. You're anointed tonight to walk in power. I'm going to say that again because somebody ain't got it. See, y'all y'all, y'all like halfway tonight, but that's okay. I'm used to it on a Friday night conference because y'all done went through the week and you done went through traffic and now you got to come in here and just get your mind right. And so we have to dig a little harder on Friday nights when it's a conference. But that's okay because I'm finna break up all the fallow ground. I don't mind busting the head of the devil so that I can get next to you and give you this word that God has for you. So we gonna break up the fallow ground and I'm gonna tell you exactly what God wants you to know. That you're anointed to walk in power. You're anointed to walk in power. You're anointed to tap into another realm of his glory. You're anointed. You just forgot it. You forgot that you was anointed for this time and season. You forgot that this is the best time for God to show up and show out in your life. Yeah, it's a time where more divorce rates are, but it's a time where more marriage rates can come on up. Come on up a little higher. Come on up a little higher. Yeah, you're going to get engaged. Yeah, you're going to get the proposal. Yeah, you're going to get it. And then them that are married, yeah, y'all going to go to a next level. You ain't got to look like the world. You ain't got to sound like the world. Yeah, the world is going through, but you ain't got to go through. You are set apart for such a time as this. Our theme scripture is in Zechariah 2 and 5. It says, for I, said the Lord, will be unto her. Somebody say, unto me. Unto me. Unto me. A wall of fire around and about her. And will be the glory. Come on, somebody. Say glory. Glory in the midst of me. Glory in the midst of me. Come on and declare. I got glory in the midst of me. I got glory in the midst of me. I got glory in the midst of me. I ain't going to take too much time. I'm going to walk y'all through. You got to understand what he's talking about, his glory in the midst of you. That means his fame is in the midst of you. That means his power is in the midst of you. That means his anointing is there. His majesty is there. I don't know about you, but I want the glory. Come on, come on. The glory gives me the anointing. The glory gives me my praise. The glory gives me my power. I want the glory because there, that's when I can walk in my full authority. When the devil comes at me one way, he can flee from me seven different ways because I got what? I got the glory of God on my life. I want the glory. I pray for the glory. I praise for the glory. I got faith for the glory. Anybody got faith for the glory? I'm going to ask again. Anybody got faith for the glory? Faith for the glory. Because you got to understand what you mean when you say I got faith for the glory. Glory is going to take you to another level. And then at that other at that another level, you might see another devil. Come on, somebody. But you got faith for the glory to go through, to get to, so that you can empower somebody else. I got faith for the glory. That no matter what, when I'm walking through the glory of God, when I'm tapping in the glory of God, I know that on the other side is a whole other level of blessings and breakthrough. But you got to have faith for the glory. My first point for you tonight is, if I'm going to activate the glory, i got to activate faith for the glory. you got to activate faith for the glory. you got to activate faith for the glory. I want to say that again because y'all got to understand that if you're going to walk in the glory, you got to activate faith for the glory. you got to activate faith for the glory because the glory is all about God's presence. And in God's presence is miracles, signs, and wonders. The glory is all about God's presence. You ain't got the faith for it. How can you tap into it? So faith, understand this, faith is the key that opens doors for the manifestation of the power. And without faith, you can't have it. Where did I get that from? Hebrews 11 and 6. Y'all, I'm going to walk quickly. It says, and without faith, it's impossible. Oh, come on, somebody. I can't even please God and get to the glory if I ain't got faith. I can't even tap into a miracle if I ain't got faith. I can't even walk in a miracle if I ain't got faith. I can't even walk in my marriage being resurrected, my children being blessed, my bank account being full. If I don't have the faith, I said, without faith, it's impossible for you, you and you to please me. Because if you come to me, you got to know who I am when you come to me. That I'm not no Rudy Poo God. I am the God of the increase. I am the God that made a way. I am the God of Stone Tower. I am the almighty Jehovah God that reigns.
things in the midst of storms. Come on, somebody. He said, some of y'all been trying to come to me, but you forgot who I was. Come on. You forgot that I'm the God of the miracle, but you coming to me in prayer, but where's your faith? If some of you need to come to him and be like, well, God, I do believe, but you know there is a little part that, that, that you got to help me with my unbelief. Because you walking, you talking, but you ain't walking. Because the minute the frustration comes, now you depressed. Now you oppressed. Now God then changed his mind. Why? Because a little bit of frustration knocked at your door. And what the thing that you first had faith for, now you ain't got no faith. Because now God changed his mind. But let me tell you something. God ain't bipolar. God ain't going to tell you to be here this season, this time. And then next season, uh, then the next week, you be like, oh, I changed my mind. I made a mistake. What God you talking to? Who are you listening to? Because if, you, if you're going to come to God, you can't be playing with God because God ain't playing with you. He said, if you, if you come to me, you got to know who I am. You got to believe that I exist. And those that do that, he said, he said, I reward those who earnestly seek me. Understand this. Impossibilities become possible only through faith. Only through faith. Look at this, Mark 9, 23. Jesus is frustrated with y'all. Listen to me. He frustrated with y'all when you come and ask him, God, if you will, if you can. He's going to look at you just like he did the man in Mark 9, 23. He said, if you can, let, let me quote what you just told me. You just came to me and asked me if I can. Didn't I just say that if you're going to come to me, you got to first know me? You got to know who I am? That if I parted the Red Sea and allowed the children of Israel to go across it, don't you think I will part everything that's standing in your way so that you can go across it? He said, if I can. Child, you done lost your mind. Listen, this is Jesus talking to a man that came up to him and asked him, can you help me with this blessing? He looked at him. He said... If you can, let me quote what you just said. He said, everything. Come on, somebody. Everything. How much? Everything. Every, a little bit? Everything. Mm, half of it. Everything. He said, everything is possible for him who believes. Come on, somebody. Everything is possible. Now, listen, let me go ahead and tell you, Linda, that just because it don't show up when you want to, come on, somebody. Come on. Just because you don't make it when you want to make it. See, I almost quit on God because he told me to start a business I made $125 in a year and I said now God if you can he said wait 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 hold on just because it didn't come how you wanted it to come just just because it didn't come in the time that you wanted it to come he said that don't mean that I didn't call you to it you are going through a test and if you pass the test I'm going to show you the best that I got for you I came out of a year of $125 year, I revamped with the God in prayer, talked about it, prayed about it, meditated, fasted, did everything I was supposed to do. It came out making six figures the next year. Come on, somebody. And never went back. Never went back. See, I'm going to talk to somebody who ain't got faith right now, who faith is a little somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. And you borderline with God because it ain't coming like you wanted it to come. It ain't happening as fast as you wanted it to happen. And God said, if I can Come on. Just because you ain't got it in a year? You doubting me? If, wait, wait, wait. Time out. What'd you say again? Perhaps did you say if I can? Did you say if I can? See, God has a funny way of checking us. So he said, if I can. Matthew 9, 29, he touched the eyes and said, watch this. According to your faith. He said, then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith. You're anointed to receive the power, but you got to first have what? Faith. He said, it's, it's going to happen, but it can't happen unless you have faith. Oh, my God. He said, will it be unto you? So if you got faith for half of a man, <laughs> come on, somebody. You got faith for half of a man. You're going to get it. Because it's according to what? You got faith for half of a business. I'm a part-timer. 
because the money ain't coming to you. I know them thoughts because I was there. I said, I'm going I'm to I'm do it on the side. And, and, and I'm going to this and I'm going to that. And, 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 I, and I was having faith for half of a business. Come on. I don't know who I'm talking to up in here. But I'm telling you, you, get, you are anointed to walk in power. You are anointed to walk in authority. You are anointed. But it's according to your faith. So I had faith for half of a business. Because I wanted to work at that part time. Because I ain't had no money. But you got to understand it takes faith. Number two, the second thing you're going to need to walk in, 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 in power. He said, not only do you have to have faith, but after faith comes expectation. Because I, watch this, I got faith to step out of Egypt. But when I get in the wilderness, I got to expect that I'm coming out of it. Come on, somebody. See, I got faith to step out of Egypt. When he called the children of Israel out of Egypt, he said, y'all calling, I got a land flowing with milk and honey. But he did tell them in the in-between place, you're going to have a wilderness. Right. So they had enough faith to step out of Egypt, but they didn't have radical faith to go to uh, Canaan. Wow. Wow. So, so their expectation, watch this. When you come from one level to another level, your expectation got to go to another level. They came from one level. But the expectation went to the opposite level. So if you coming from this level to that level, then your faith got to walk with you, baby. You got to have the expectation that, okay, I had enough faith here, but I got to be expecting mountains to move, even in a wilderness. I got to be expecting something to happen, even in a wilderness. See, expectation is readiness. Expectation is readiness to receive. And watch this. Expectation compels God to move and manifest his power on behalf of you. So, so he said, not only does she got faith, but she got expectation with the faith. And expectation property is like a magnet. So I see the faith, but now your expectation is pulling God towards you. He's like, I got to come for her. Because not only does she have faith, but she got expectation. And she's writing visions. She's making it plain. She's declaring and decreeing. She's going through a wilderness and still shouting that God done already did it. Because now your expectation is pulling God to you. Whereas first God said, oh, she got faith. I love that. He is pleased by your faith, but he is moved by your expectation. He is moved by your expectation. He is moved by your expectation. See, expectation, next point, is positioning yourself for the miracle. I got faith for it, but because I expect it, now I got to position me for me. Come on, somebody. Because there's something in me that I'm believing God for. I got expectation for it, but I got to now position me for it. Man. So expectation is positioning you for the miracle. Expectation is belief that it's going to happen. And it's the release. Watch this, though. You got to first have faith. But this next thing, expectation is the release of faith. Oh my goodness, listen. I got faith, but how am I releasing it? With your mouth, with your feet, with your hands. So I got faith, but I haven't been releasing faith. I got faith, but I haven't been releasing faith. When you have faith and the expectation, expectation causes you to release faith. That I ain't got but $100 in my bank account. But God said, sow the seed. Come on, somebody. God said, sow the seed. And because I have expectation with faith, now it's causing me to release. My God, today you better tell us how to get to the next level and walk in power. He said, because you got faith, expectation will cause you to release it. And expectation provokes manifestation. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Watch this. When faith is released through expectation, it compels God. Look at Isaiah chapter 30 and 18. When faith is released with expectation, it compels God. Meaning that he's drawn to you. He's moved by you. Look at Isaiah. It says... And therefore, the Lord earnestly waits. What does he wait? He's, what does that mean? He's what? 
He's expecting. He's looking. What else he's doing? Longing to be gracious to you. Mm, that's good. My goodness, right there. We can park right there. He's, he's, he's earnestly waiting. He's earnestly expecting, looking, and longing to be gracious to you. Therefore, he lifts himself up that he may have mercy on you and show loving kindness to you. He's expecting your expectation. He's expecting your expectation. Acts 3 and 6. It says, watch this. Acts 3, 5 through 6. He said, and he gave heed unto them. What's the next word? Expecting. Expecting to receive something. This is the blind man, the beggar. He's one of them, right? So even the blind man, the beggar, stood there. What was he doing? Expecting something. I'm going to stand in faith. I'm going to stand in faith. And if it take me a year to make some money, I'm going to stand in faith. If it take all the money out my bank account, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm expecting a return. And because he was expecting to receive, whatever he was going to receive, he just wanted some money, whatever you can give him. Peter said, simply go have I'm not. But that that I give you, he, instead of money, he got a miracle. Why? Because he was expecting something from God. He was expecting a move. He was expecting somebody to bless. He was expecting something to happen. Have you been expecting? And if you have, prove it. No, no, prove it. What have you done? Document it. Because God, this is part of your vision. You're telling God. See, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that, that he should repent and change his mind. When he speak, he act, and every promise that he makes, he will fulfill it. So if you document and say, God, I have moved by faith, and I have been expecting it because I have released faith in, this, in these areas, document it and bring it to God. Because what you're doing is reminding him of his word. That's good. You're reminding God of his word. And God said, I can't lie. I'm compelled to move on your behalf. I'm compelled to move on your behalf. Why? Because you've been expecting. Mm, my goodness. But watch this. Here's the negative side of expecting. I'm going to skip a verse. I'm going to go to Matthew 19, 16 to 13. There's a negative side of this. There was a man that was rich, right? He like, dude, man, Jesus, I want to be down. I want to, I want to rock with you. My, what's that called, Molly? Rock. He said, I want to rock with you. Okay. Jesus was like, yeah. He said, what I gotta do? He said, Jesus was like, you know, don't kill, don't lie, don't cheat, don't murder. You know, all of this stuff. He was like, man, I did all of that, so I get the rock. He's like, oh, there's one more thing. Look at verse twenty-one. Remember, we're talking about expectation, right? He said, if you want to give it all you got, Jesus replied, go sell your possessions. Go give. That last hundred dollars in your bank account, go give it to somebody and bless them. He said, give everything to the poor. All your wealth will then be in heaven and come follow me. Now, here's that part, that one part. <laughs> that was the last thing the young man what? Oh my God. If that's the last thing you expect in God, when God tell you to do something, he tell you to move, he tell you to sow, he tell you to cut out for a relationship, he tell you, let go, let God, drop the attitude, do what I told you to do, go here, do that. That was the last thing you was expecting. And because it was the last thing you was expecting, you couldn't receive. Come on, come on, come on. That was the last thing you was expecting. And because it was the last thing you was expecting, you couldn't receive from God. Wow. God, you mean? My Lord. Mm. Wow. Well, I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> Before, there was good expectation. But when God expects you to drop a bad habit, to drop something that's not like him, he said, he said, that's the last thing the young man expected to hear. And so, crestfallen, what did he do? He walked away. <laughs> you mean I got to serve more? 
You mean I got to show up in church to prove that I'm faithful? You mean I got to get a position? You mean that I got to sow a seed? You mean I got to start a business and not make money? You mean I got to quit my job? You mean I got to get a divorce? That was the last thing he was expecting. Expectation compels you to release faith. And if you don't, if you can't release faith, you can't manifest God. Wow. I'm going to say that again for somebody in the back. If you can't release faith, you can't manifest God. If you can't release faith, you can't manifest God. Because faith is the first step. Expectation is the second step. Expectation causes you to release faith. And if you can't release it, you can't manifest it. The last thing. Understand this. The next thing. Number three. I'm moving quickly. Fervent and heartfelt prayers. It's the third thing. So you got faith. You got expectation. You got prayers. You praying over it. Right? It connects and communicates one needs to God in faith. Watch this. Prayer is the thing that connects. Faith is the thing that moves. Expectation is the thing that causes manifestation. So prayer connects you. Faith moves. Expectation manifests. Catch that? Prayer connects. Faith moves. Expectation manifests. Prayer connects. Faith move. Expectation manifests. Psalms 91, 14 and 16. He said, because he loves me, I'm going to rescue him. Because he what? Acknowledge my name. What does that mean? You on your face. You crying out. You connecting with God. He says, because he acknowledges my name, I'm going to protect him. He'll come on me and I'm going to what? I'm going to answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'm going to deliver him and honor him. And with long life, am I going to satisfy him and show him my salvation? Prayer connects. Faith moves. Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I'm going to listen to you. You will seek me. What is that? And then you, you, when you seek me with all your heart, what's he going to do? I'm going to find you. Prayer connects. Faith moves. Expectation manifests. And the last thing is praise. Mm. You're anointed for this. Mm. The last thing is praise. Because you have expectation, you can't help but have praise. I'm going to say that again. Because you have expectation, you can't have you can't help but have praise. You can't have praise without having faith that is already done. See, you was thinking, well, how can I have praise if it hasn't manifest, it haven't manifested yet? I got faith, but but how can how can I have praise without manifestation? It's called prophetic praise. Prophetic, you prophetically praising him. For something that ain't even there. But it's there. You see what I'm saying? It ain't even there but it's there because you see it but you don't see it. He said be before you can see it, you got to see it. That turns your simple prayers into prophetic prayers. Prophetic prayers. See, a simple prayer, understand this. You can start out by saying, God bless me. God, I need. God, I desire. God, I want. So this is how your prayer go from that. And if you're praying that same prayer every day, I got to question you about your faith. You know why? Because God heard you the first time. <laughs> the second time is God I thank you that it's already done I don't see it but I see it I praise you in advance that I have it God and not only do I have it I see myself holding it in my hands I declare that God you've already done and I, I already believe that the mountain is already moved I see XYZ I praise you for XYZ I declare XYZ see I don't, I don't keep praying the same prayer 
Because I know God heard me the first time. So after I know he heard me the first time, I declare it done the second, third, fourth, fifth, hundred more times. Amen. Why? Because I have faith and faith release expectation. Expectation release my faith. And then now that is going to manifest God's glory. Amen. I'm going to leave you with these scriptures. Judges 20 and 18. It says the Israelites, we're talking about praise, right? And my husband was into this, but I'm going to reiterate this. It says in Judges 20 and 18, the Israelites arose and went up to the house of God, the place of Bethel, and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall take the lead to battle against the Benjamites? They in a time of warfare. You Are you in a warfare season where it feel like you're fighting? on every hand to get to the blessing. Yeah. Where it feel like you're fighting, like the enemy coming at you left and right, and, and, and you're still trying to get through the blessing, but it's getting hard out there. And you're getting weary and you're getting tired. And so you're in warfare, just like the Israelites were. And then they said, God, it said, which of us shall take the lead to battle in this warfare? And then the Lord said, Judah shall go first. Come on, somebody. Who is Judah? What is Judah? Yes. Judah is your Praise. Come on and say it again. Judah is what? Praise. Judah is your praise. You're in the middle of warfare. He said, they said, which one should go? Who should go first? He said, Judah gotta go first. Praise gotta go first. You gotta praise it like you and I already won this battle. Stop acting like you defeated. Why are you walking around here with your lip down, with your mouth like what? And God said, what are you doing? Who go first? You in the middle of warfare? Praise in the middle of your warfare. Come on. Yeah. You in the middle of next level? Praise in the middle of next level. Yeah. That's right. That's so who, who going first, God? Judah. Judah. Yeah. And Joshua chapter 6. When they make a long blast. Somebody say long. Because you've been in season for a long time. When they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall, the thing that was blocking you, of enclosure shall fall down in its place. And the people shall go over it, every man straight before him. When you hear the sound, of the trumpet, can you hear the sound of the trumpet? The sound of the trumpet is a victory call. But they hadn't gotten the victory yet. God said, when you hear the sound in your spirit, I need you to make some noise. Let me hear that sound. Because some of us need to know what a victory sound is like in the spirit. In the, in the children of Israel days, I think this was called the shofar. And, and there was a sound that had to go forth. It was a sound of victory. It was a sound of next level. It was a sound that let every devil know that you're not going to knock me in this season. You're not going to block me in this season. My whole house is blessed. My family is blessed. We're going to another level. Devil, you can't have my mind. You can't have my spirit. You can't have my soul. You can't have my children. You can't have my relationships. You can't have my finances. There is a sound that is in the atmosphere. I dare you to begin to open up your mouth. Stand to your feet and begin to make a sound. Letting God know that you are in the middle of a war, but you've already won. Your marriage is in the middle of a war, but you've already won. Your children, your finances, generational curses, gotta fall off in the name of Jesus. I dare you to begin to make a sound in this atmosphere. I dare you to begin to make a sound declaring and decreeing that victory is yours. Oh, hallelujah. Come on and worship. Come on and get radical for God. Come on and declare that your family is blessed in this hour. Your business is blessed in this hour. I don't know about you, but I hear a sound. I hear a sound that's shaking 
the heavenlies. I hear a sound that's changing your life. I hear a sound that's changing your next level. I hear a sound of increase.